507 Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Good morning to your friends along with Johnny B, Ken Weaver, Dan Mendes here indeed Wednesday, February 28th as they say hunt day and um, Nikki Haley, man, she got trounced in Michigan. Now, this is obviously not big news. Also not big news is that she is still out there, man. She is just in it to win it. And so when I heard Ken Weaver uh, talk about how she was going to stay in the race, even after Michigan, of course, the first thing that I thought of was, of course, the comment that she made after South Carolina. I promise you, our best days are yet to come. So when she said that, did she mean Michigan? I don't know. Because she lost like 65.6% to 30.1%. At least that's the number that I have. Well, what do you have, Ken? Is that the number that you settled on? I've, I've seen others where uh, Trump is at like 66% and she's at 29%. I got to be honest. I didn't even look at it. Oh, she I, got knew, it. I, I, I knew it was a landslide. Oh, yeah. Yet she says the best is yet to come, saying that after South Carolina. And then, of course, she gets her butt kicked in. I promise you. Our best days are yet to come. You know, that's kind of like a broken promise, actually. <laughs> Almost like a broken record. Yeah. It's a broken record and a broken promise. Well, the one setting records, it seems anyway, is Donald Trump because he has won yet another primary. What is that? Five? Is that five in a row? Uh, I think that's five in a row. I could try to do the math. Row. Well, to be fair, she's setting records, too, for loss. She is. Boy, she is, uh, you know. Best is yet to come. I wonder when that best is supposed to come for Nikki Haley. That's what I want to know. Maybe she should uh, dig up that old stick song, The Best of Times. Run that the rest of the way to the Super Tuesday. It's best the of, best of times. Best of times for uh, Trump. At, <laughs> at, least, at, at least for now. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I would say in going through uh, Michigan, really one of the things that folks are looking at, and Ken, you reported on this, I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive, okay. is this uncommitted vote. And they're talking about how this is a big time warning sign for Joe Biden. Need some audio. Uh, this is Rashida Tlaib. Everyone, it's Rashida. I was proud today to walk in and pull a Democratic ballot and vote uncommitted. We must protect our democracy. We must make sure that our government is about us, about the people. When 74 percent of Democrats in Michigan support a ceasefire, yet President Biden is not hearing us. This is the way we can use our democracy to say, listen, listen to Michigan. Listen to the families right now that have been directly impacted, but also listen to the majority of Americans who are saying enough. No more wars. No more using our dollars to fund a genocide. No more. So, you know, there's a lot of Muslims out there in uh, Michigan, specifically in Dearborn, Michigan. And that is where Rashida Tlaib, that's the district that she represents. The massive amount of uncommitted voters in Michigan, 76,000 people who voted for the uncommitted option. Now, this is being described as because it is this is a protest vote. Because of his handling of the Gaza war. Again, there's a lot of Muslims there in Michigan, especially in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Now, they are angry. They are very angry because they feel like Joe Biden is pro-Israel on this, which, by the way, in my opinion, he should be pro-Israel. This is the mayor of Dearborn. I think for me, voting uncommitted today is sending a message of we're trying to hold our elected official accountable. The president won Michigan by 154,000 votes four years ago. Donald Trump won it in 2016 by just 10,000. That means tens of thousands of votes against Biden could cost him the state in the general election. I mean, that's right. I mean, that is a courtesy of CBS News. And they, they talk about all of this and they talk about their concerns for... Gaza. Now, the amazing thing is, and I'm just going to say this, then I'm going to move on. You've got all of these Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan, and they're voting uncommitted as a message to Joe Biden. They're not happy with how he is handling the the war, Israel and Gaza, because, of course, as you know, Israel is responding to that horrendous a terrorist attack from Hamas, which, by the way, Hamas, of course, Joe Biden funded. But putting all of that aside. This massive uncommitted vote because of his actions related to Gaza. Do they not know what's been going on here in America? 
I mean, this is a protest vote regarding Gaza. Meantime, here in America, we have wide open borders. We have Americans being killed by these illegal aliens. I've got more on that story coming up. We have inflation that has, of course, uh, skyrocketed. Gas prices were a lot lower when Donald Trump was the president. And I mean, I could go on and on the crime in the blue cities. Of course, that is also a situation that Democrats specifically have to deal with, because that's uh, oftentimes who lives in these crime ridden cities is Democrats run by Democrats. We could talk about uh, the failed foreign policy, the pullout of Afghanistan, all of these things should lead to a protest vote against Joe Biden. But there in Dearborn, Michigan, and in Michigan, generally speaking, their big concern is what's going on in Gaza. Me personally, I like the whole America first concept. They want to put Gaza first, whatever. That's all I'm saying. Adam Abu Shami he is a guy who actually worked for Joe Biden's campaign in 2020. And, and this is sort of an indicator as to where this whole uncommitted movement is going. He actually worked for Biden in 2020. And now he is actively working against the current president. This is a clear warning to the Democratic Party that unless they do change course, they're in trouble in November. This gives us an opportunity to express our concern and to express it now in February. Adam Abu Saleh volunteered for the president's 2020 campaign. And now he's telling the president to go stick it, basically what he's doing. Now, the last time the Democrats had an incumbent president and they had a movement like this was Obama's second term in 2012. They had 20,000 people vote uh, vote uncommitted. And now Joe Biden has 76,000. What does that tell you about Joe Biden? And so this morning, even on CNN, one of the lead stories on CNN was this uncommitted vote for Joe Biden. Everybody expected Donald Trump to win. People were watching specifically about this uncommitted vote uh, regarding Joe Biden. And so this is a big problem for the president. The point is that the number of uncommitted votes was significant and a message to Joe Biden. And what they're saying is, and the question is going to be asked, they voted uncommitted in the primary in Michigan against Joe Biden. So now the question is, What's going to happen in the general election in Michigan? Will this carry on to the general election? Will the, and I'm going to air quote this, will the Muslim vote stay home in Michigan on November 5th? I've got a little bit more on this straight ahead. And by the way, the um, the knives are out for Joe Biden regarding some of the former Obama staffers who are now going on record, more of them, are going on record and talking about how absolutely horrific uh, Joe Biden is, particularly his state of mind. It's one thing for, you know, Republicans and knucklehead talk show hosts in Nashville, Tennessee, to talk about Biden's brain. It's a whole nother conversation when Democrats, particularly uh, Democrats that used to work in the Obama administration, they are going after Joe Biden as well. And it is on a massive Massive media scale on Super Talk 99.7 WTN talking about Joe Biden and his problems in Michigan. This is, of course, a big warning sign, this uncommitted vote. And one of the things that the Muslims are really angry about in Michigan, as I've been stating, is that he is supporting Israel. Uh, Pro-Israel Americans also don't like that he is calling on Israel to ease up on their response. So Biden is getting squeezed on both sides of the Israel Hamas discussion. You've got, you know, some of these uh, Muslims out there in, in Michigan and other places where they're complaining that Biden continues to give Israel missiles and he is giving them all kinds of aid and so forth. And they're also upset that he is, generally speaking, supporting Israel. But then you have those people that support Israel that are upset that Biden has been out there calling for a ceasefire. So he's trying to play both sides of the fence on the Hamas-Israel war. And that's not going to bode well, ultimately, for Joe Biden in the general election. By the way, uh, this was something that he said, Biden said, uh, while he was campaigning in Michigan, 
eating ice cream. My hope is by next Monday we'll have a ceasefire. And he reiterated his strong support for Israel, but criticized the government's plans to push further into Gaza. They're going to lose support from around the world, and that is not in Israel's interest. All right, so there you go, mumbling Joe. Could this actually hurt the uh, president in the general election because Michigan is, of course, a battleground state and, and the election could, you never know, turn on Michigan. And that's the question. Will they stay home? Will the these uncommitted voters stay home in the general election or will they come home, as some say, uh, to the Democrat Party on November 5th? But this uncommitted vote was like 13 percent of the total vote. And that was way more than the goal of the group that was pushing this. And again, this is Rashida Tlaib's district. So it is not really surprising. You do have a bunch of folks in Michigan that perhaps will stay home. That is how disgusted they are with uh, President Biden, by the way. Speaking of some of these battleground states, and I know that you folks are probably uh, tired of hearing this, but. And there is a uh, new polling out there that shows that uh, Joe Biden is losing to Donald Trump in a whole bunch of battleground states as well. And honestly, it is uh, not real surprising because of all of the things that I just said, said the state of America today, the, the state of our nation is not good. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Donald Trump. He came out with, uh, and this is unfortunately kind of a visual, but I'm going to play it anyway. Uh, They've come out with a a commercial, and it's a commercial that puts the blame uh, for that murdered 22-year-old co-ed in Georgia squarely at the feet of Joe Biden. And uh, they should. This is that commercial. Listen closely. I believe that more Americans are concerned with illegal immigration than what is going on between Hamas and Israel. Following some breaking news out of Athens, Georgia. Two colleges have canceled classes today as police look for a murderer. Lake and Riley was described as a shining light. A dean's list nursing student. Police arrested 26-year-old Jose Antonio Ibarra. Ibarra crossed into Texas illegally back in September of 2022, then was released into the United States on parole. We're confident this border is secure. We have a secure border. We agree that uh, the border is secure. And we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. The border is closed. The border is secure. We have taken unprecedented action. Look, the border is not open. Fox News can now confirm that Jose Antonio Barra was busted last year in New York City. But ICE didn't even have time to put in a detainer on him because, hey, he was already back out on the street. I mean, listen, that is a very effective commercial. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tweet that out. I think I actually did tweet it out at Dan Mandis show. But... You know, that spot, that commercial, it it features the Biden administration's, you know, Hillary Clinton famous for saying it takes a village. All of the village idiots of the Biden administration, right? You had Alejandro Mayorkas, you had cringe Jean-Pierre, you had Kamala Harris, and of course, uh, Joe Biden as well. And and Donald Trump is, is right to blame Joe Biden for her death. You know why? Because, as you know, he came in in 2022 And we were talking uh, yesterday about the fact that the Biden administration, they're not even able to execute or carry out the back end of of dealing with all of this illegal immigration. Just because of the sheer number of illegals that are coming in, they they don't have an effective policy in dealing with all of these folks and figuring out who they are once they get here or what they're capable of. Again, just because there are so many. So this is a big conversation across America. And again, Donald Trump is absolutely right to do what he did, which is place the blame squarely on the Biden administration.